pharmacy officers here attached to Comtok International. Um, yesterday, coming out of yesterday's session and also today, what actually popped for me is that each Caribbean country actually shares similar issues as it relates to youth and having other youths as well around our team, it helped me to see where we are and where we are headed. It also helped with some of what I would have been missing and some of the mechanisms to get there. So I think yesterday and today more or less helped reinforce what I would have needed to do to get to actually have adequate, effective communication with the youth within my community. So for me, the session overall would have, you know, done exactly what I was expecting and to take back to my community, in fact, is that, you know, they constantly have the support, we are here to work with them and we are not just going to say we are going to just work, but coming out of today, there was a need and a stress for m &E, which actually said that we are not just going to promise we are going to do stuff, but we are going to evaluate, keep follow through with them and make sure it's actually done. And that's my take on yesterday and today's session. Hi, I am Kirba Marie Cattell, also from Trinidad and Tobago, just like Jamila. And in both sessions, what for me the major takeaway is that there are so many young people in our region that are doing such great work with HIV AIDS and comprehensive sexual education. But also the fact that depending on where you are and which country you're from, comprehensive can be a controversial term. Um, so it's defining that in your own space but also trying to get a regional definition so that everybody is on the same page where that is. Um, one of the major things I learned to and absolutely appreciated would have been the rich picture session. I think that's definitely something that I can take to the groups that I work with, namely the One Young World Ambassadors and the Global Shapers at the Port of Spain Hub, because it basically brought, it, it shows, it provides a roadmap of where you are, where you need to go, and everything that happens in between, because sometimes you lose sight of how exactly it is that you get to your journey, but if you actually use the rich picture format, like you can actually specifically plan out things that you'd like to do your, um, and even do a SWOT analysis of specific thematic areas, so that's definitely something that I would take back to my community. Theo Grajales. I am from Belize. Um, so I, I think this uh, this has been a very informative space. Um, during the course of uh, yesterday and today, there was a lot of discussion around the work, what um, youth have been doing in their different countries within the Caribbean region, and really learning about what strategies they are using to do their advocacy, what type of activities they are doing to, to address issues in their communities, um, and how to keep the the work of youth in the region sustainable. Um, I think it's a very uh, uh, rich meeting and there's a lot of knowledge, there's a lot of discussion and information exchange uh, which really will help to contribute our different, uh, feed into the work that we do in, uh, in our country. Um, for me, I think one of the, uh, the activities I take the most is uh, the importance of how, uh, of the documenting through policy briefs and all of that. Uh, yesterday, um, uh, we had a session on um, on policy briefs and information of putting this data and putting it in a structured way where you can present it to decision makers in order to fast, uh, foster your advocacy work within your country, uh, which is something I think is very important. Um, apart from that, I think the activity this morning, which is very uh, interactive, about in taking the rich picture, which is an activity that allows us to really put into a, into perspective in a literal drawing what we expect, uh, what, how do we want to get there and what are the issues and where we expect to go. So I think that's an activity that really can be also replicated within our countries. It really gets a lot of information from that. 
yeah um, but uh, overall I think uh, uh, this space is mostly is very needed within our region this space is like of youth involvement and I think PANCAP as, a, as an organization has done a great job in how giving us this space which is really uh, for and by youth um, so yeah I think uh, it's good. Hi my name is Teresa Taylor I am a former youth ambassador of Jamaica and currently a member of the PANCAP we are here talking a little bit about the third annual leadership conference on sexual reproductive health, rights, and aging. Basically, over the last couple of days, we've been discussing the statistics that has been presented to us in respect of young people and their access throughout the region. It was very interesting for me to find out that a number of countries are having the same problems and are addressing them differently but have not been collaborating to get best practices across the region. And so we tend to be operating in silos, doing good work but not enough work at a regional level because we do not know that other countries are having the same issue or that they've actually addressed the same issue before. What we found very useful too was the information about Jamaica Safe Spaces, the team hub that we have in Jamaica, which is not really labeled as a health center. It's really just a place that young people can jam and it's something that has also been duplicated in places like Trinidad and Tobago and I see that Belize also has a similar model going. It's, it's been very very fun discovering just how interesting best practices can be adapted across the region and how we will find different ways of solving the very same problem based on the situations that we find ourselves in but how similarly those problems, those solutions I'm sorry, have come to solve the issues.